And more about peptides. Yeah, so peptides are getting a lot of interest now. Yeah, um, BPC-157 so, is all the rage. It is. So um, peptides are just small strings of amino acids. They can act as hormones. So a hormone is a molecule that would released in one point in the body and goes and acts on a bunch of other areas of the body. This is like testosterone doesn't do one thing. It does many, many things. So it acts kind of, as we say, systemically. Peptides can act as hormones. So uh, melanotan obviously changes the skin, changes libido, all sorts of things. There are peptides like GP157, gastric peptide 157. This is a peptide that is naturally made by the body, but people have synthesized and turned into a compound that they take and inject that does seem to have the ability to repair damaged tissues of various kinds. It mimics some of the downstream effects of growth hormone. Things like GP157 definitely do accelerate the healing of an injury and there's no question about that. That's and interesting so, because I talked to a doctor and he was trying to tell me that it didn't work. And he was saying if you even inject a saline into an area, it will alleviate some pain. And I was like, I don't think you're right. Yeah, but this is like the TRT discussion or the steroids com conversation 20 years ago where people say, do they really work? I mean, people- yeah, this it, guy, I was very it, incredulous. I mean, yeah. the, when I was listening to this guy talk about it, I was like, listen, I've used it myself. And I had a, a tendonitis in my elbow that I just could not fix. Yeah. I started using BPC-157. It was gone in two weeks. Yeah. yeah a lot of people are using GP-157. What I is don't... the difference between BPC and GP-157? Uh, uh, BPC thing? is a different, I think it's either a different stream of string of amino acids, excuse me, or something related. You know, the gut has a bunch of stuff that it secretes that tells the rest of the body about health status. This is why the gut microbiome is so critical. GP157 and these other peptides are things that when the gut is happy, the body starts secreting these things that allow you to heal faster. This is why when people are like, when they're sick in a hospital or they can't move, they get sores that turn into massive infections, right? And it's not just because hospitals have a lot of infection. It's because when you were sedentary, the gut suffers when we're eating the kind of garbage they feed you in most hospitals, the gut suffers, and then the whole system crashes. Which and is so crazy that they're doing this in hospitals, right? Well, hospital, hospital cafeterias are among the, the, the worst food in the world, which is, makes no sense. It's so crazy. Now with BPC-157 or GP-157, whichever one is most effective, is there one more effective than the other? Not that I'm aware of. GP-157 is the one that I hear more athletes and various other communities who need to repair injuries taking. Now, are they taking it locally or are they taking it subcutaneously? So you take it systemically, but people have this thing, just like with testosterone, people, it would act systemically, but people will like, if they want to repair a tissue, they'll inject locally. And there are local effects of, of these hormones and these peptides. So there's some benefit to injecting it locally? Perhaps. 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 Enough so that it's not going to hurt you because it's also going to be systemic, right? right? Higher concentrations delivered to a particular area that's mm -hmm. going to... Uh, maybe, you know, if you're, if it has to be distributed systemically, you have receptors everywhere, putting it locally can definitely enhance the effect. So like similar to the way they treat stem cells, like stem cells, they shoot it locally or you can get an IV. Yeah. Like for instance, you have what are called secretagogues. Sounds like synagogue, but secretagogue, mm -hmm. yeah. which is basically a hormone stimulating hormone. So growth hormone, as we know, various people use aids in it. Growth hormone really ca uh, causes metabolism and repair. That's really what it controls. Makes organs grow, but it also increases metabolism, burns fat, et cetera. You heal faster. But there's growth hormone releasing hormone, and those go under the names like ipamorelin, tessamorelin, uh, things of that sort. And now there are a lot of people who are taking those peptides in order to stimulate their more growth hormone as opposed to taking growth hormone directly. Mm. So now there's this whole class of peptides that are not hormones per se, but that they stimulate more hormones. Are those effective? Well, they absolutely work. Whoa, the way you said that's scary. Yeah, they, Wasn't it scary? They absolutely work. Things like tessamorelin, ipamorelin, yeah. absolutely. They'll cause you to release more growth hormone, you burn fat, you recover quicker, mm. you, all, all, the, all the stuff. This year's Olympics, you're gonna see some amazing record breaking in people that are not taking the banned substances. Because they can take that stuff? Because they can take certain peptides because every time something's on a banned substance list, all you have to do is get right outside the, the list and take something that is chemically similar enough. They don't, they don't ban pathways, they ban particular molecules. So you can't take clenbuterol, you can't test, you can't take DECA, you can't do all this. But people will take st hormone stimulating hormones. You could take this ipamorelin stuff and compete in the Olympics? I don't know if it's on the USADA list, but 
I mean, there are, let's just say there are, there is lots and lots of peptide use in order to get into these pathways. So and, there's some stuff that is effective that yeah. is not on the list because they haven't discovered right. it yet. Yeah. They and haven't thing, banned it yet. Right. And things like sermorelin, which is another growth hormone secreting peptide, these, you know, they're, 10 or 20 of these things that can promote the release of these different hormones. And so the peptides are an area that is considered gray market. They're not illegal. They're not legal. They're not prescribed by doctors, except sermorelin is actually prescribed by MDs for growth hormone deficiency. And it's actually was a popular diet a few years ago where people were given sermorelin and told to go on very low calorie diets. And because of the way growth hormone can pre uh, preserve muscle and kill appetite, people were losing weight. And so um, in Hollywood, peptides are really big because they, unlike steroids, unlike hormones, peptides don't scare uh, the category of people in Hollywood who don't want to put on muscle. Um, let's just say it's big with the ladies. They're big because it keeps your appetite down, you burn fat. Mm. But some of those people I've spoken to and they've said they're getting joint pain. Well, if you take growth hormone secreting peptides, you're going to start making more collagen. Your skin will look more youthful but you'll also start building more cartilage in your wrists. And you know, the skeleton has to contend with that. And oh, so everything what if you grows. have cartilage problems, yeah. like with your knees, would that help heal them? Uh, it likely would. Really? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. What about, um, what about meniscus? Because meniscus is a real issue. Like meniscus tears, one of the problems with it uh, is there's not a lot of blood supply. Right. So Danny, those guys, I don't know where the vi uh, how to find the videos. I don't know if they're still up there. Maybe they were in the stories. But when they, they would go in for meniscus tears, they're going to burr away a lot of the bone and other hard scar tissue that's in there. Uh -huh. And they're putting stem cells in there from what I could see in these videos. And then they're also going to locally treat it with some of these uh, peptides like GP157 and other things like that. So you're creating an environment of well-being and health and mobility for a joint that's battered. What um, they do at Ways to Well is they combine stem cells with BPC-157 as well. So that's a common thing. Yeah. And so when you say, you know, do these things work, they, they absolutely work. Uh, what are the risks? Well, you're tickling cells in the pituitary to secrete more hormone. So you're going to get some balancing out of other hormones. You know, if, if guys want to run out and just increase... Um, growth hormone, you're going to increase, all, you'll increase testosterone and you'll also increase estrogen in parallel. So people have different sensitivities. And so this is why it's an experimental science. And this is why most MDs are not going to prescribe any of this stuff because a, an individual has to really be able to think intelligently and know, they have to understand their system. It's clear, you know, your system, you know, when you're feeling good and you know, when you're not feeling good, 